The post office is in grave danger. Check this out. Leave your comments, ding the bell, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. And uh, on the line with us is Lisa Graves, the founder and executive director of truenorthresearch.org. Uh, Lisa is one of the great researchers out there. Uh, she, her Twitter handle is the Lisa Graves, G R A V E S, or It's True North. And uh, Lisa, welcome back to the program. It's been a while since we've talked. Uh, you wrote this brilliant story. I saw it over at Raw Story. I'm guessing it was elsewhere as well, about how uh, uh, DeJoy basically got into uh, his postmaster job. Tell us about this. Thank you so much, Tom. Yes, um, what we discovered in looking through the financial filings, the campaign finance filings, was that uh, Mr. DeJoy, who um, was tapped by Trump actually to be the deputy finance chair for the RNC, actually actually escalated his donations after the post of Postmaster General became open. Uh, and so once there was an announcement that there was a seat open to become the new Postmaster General, Mr. DeJoy donated uh, uh, more than $600,000 over the span of eight weeks to Donald Trump's campaign uh, and the RNC and the strategy to get this president reelected in this election this fall. Wow. Now, in the past, I've talked about how the big prize when you're looking at authoritarian governments, if you look at uh, Russia, if you look at Hungary, if you look at Turkey, if you look at uh, the Philippines, uh, if, uh, I mean, even left-wing authoritarian governments, if you look at Venezuela, the big prize is all the stuff that the government has that represents potential value or money if it were privatized. And those things get passed out, you know, uh, the oil companies, the utility companies, the, you know, fill in the blanks, right? All kinds of things. See, uh, we've all seen this in Russia and in these other countries. Gets passed out to the good buddies of the autocrat. And I've been wondering out loud if DeJoy, whose company, um, you know, does part of what the post office does and has contracted with the post office over the years, if he's willing to do all this work and put up with all this crap, because at the end of the day, if Trump gets reelected, he fully expects that Trump is going to privatize the post office, give him first shot at it, and he'll go from being worth a couple hundred million dollars to being worth billions of dollars. Do you think that that's, uh, is that some kind of wacky conspiracy theory? Uh, or is there some possibility that DeJoy and possibly other people, you know, the, the, the coal lobbyist in charge of the Interior Department, the oil lobbyist in charge, or maybe I've got them backwards in charge of the EPA, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, that, that some of these people are looking to massively feather their own nests once the United States fully ceases to be a democracy and becomes a kleptocracy? Well, I have to say, you know, what, what the testimony, my testimony and the testimony of others makes clear is that Mr. DeJoy was not on the list of the professional search firm that was looking for a replacement for the Postmaster General. He was put on the list by Mike Duncan, who is one of the main fundraisers for Mitch McConnell, uh, and to keep Mitch McConnell in power in the U.S. Senate. And then he was approved by a shorthanded, inexperienced new board entirely appointed by Donald Trump uh, to be the Board of Governors of the Postal Service. And he became the Postmaster General in June. And as you point out, he has tens of millions of dollars of investments in a competitor and contractor of the Postal Service, a firm that you know would certainly benefit if more of the Postal Service were um, parted out or contracted out. And it's quite clear that Mr. DeJoy has 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 said that he, um, in essence, is going to pursue some of the um, changes that he initially um, imposed that were stopped this August or, or September. That he's going to continue them quote, after the election. Um, and in fact, what we're seeing is that he is, is trying to continue this effort to cut costs or in essence possibly outsource more of the Postal Service uh, as part of this longer term Donald Trump strategy to, to privatize the Postal Service. And as I wrote about for In the Public Interest, in fact, um, Charles Koch has spent years, decades, staking efforts to get the Postal Service privatized. And so, as you point out, the big assets of governments are targeted by kleptocrats for control and by corporations that want a piece of the pie. And here you have a situation where the Postal Service handles more than 400 million pieces of mail a day. If you made a penny on each of that, on, on all of that, you would be richer than Jeff Bezos uh, in a matter probably of weeks, uh, just a penny of it. And so it's an incredibly lucrative 
um, possibility for uh, someone or someone to get their hands on it. And in fact, this debt that is saddling the Postal Service, this effort to have um, uh, its uh, future health care benefits paid into a fund for decades in advance, a, a burden that no other company or agency has, was designed to help privatize the Postal Service to make it more attractive to an IPO or commercialization. And so it is certainly the case that our Postal Service is at grave risk and the wrong man is in charge of the Postal Service, and he needs to be fired or should resign. Wow. Uh, can you share with us any of the details of Charles Koch's multi-decade effort to privatize the post office? Uh, yes, I can. Uh, uh, we know that Charles Koch staked uh, the person who founded, or really founded the modern version, or the modern version of Reason Magazine, Bob Poole, back in the early 1970s. It was Charles Koch. It was Charles Koch's operations that seated him and also helped uh, to basically give him a, give him the foundation, uh, in essence, the Reason Foundation, the, the funding to help that foundation start, which allowed Robert Poole to push for massive privatization of public services. Um, he also, Charles Koch also staked the Liber- Libertarian Party, which then began calling for the abolition of the Postal Service. His brother, David, ran on that platform in 1980. Um, and then Charles Koch staked uh, Richard Fink and Citizens for a Sound Economy, which is now called Americans for Prosperity, uh, in efforts to uh, push for a privatization commission, which Reagan put Richard Fink on. And Richard Fink, from there, advocated for the uh, privatization of the Postal Service. Then uh, Charles Koch's operation, Citizens for a Sound Economy, which again is now AFP, Americans for Prosperity, uh, took on a guy named James Miller who also was advocating for privatizing the Postal Service. He'd been the head of the OMB under Reagan and is the guy notorious for approving uh, the reg to try to classify ketchup as a vegetable. So that guy came on board, and he's been the longest-serving board member aiding Charles Cook's political operation. He then got on the Postal Board of Governors uh, during George W. Bush's term, and from there he was the one who helped steer through, with the help of Susan Collins, the effort to saddle the Postal Service with this unprecedented debt to either push it into bankruptcy or make it more attractive for an IPO. But let me just say one more thing, Tom, while I, while I have you, which is the other part of the testimony yesterday uh, that I gave before Congress was that uh, Mr. DeJoy has been, was accused by his own brother of stealing his mail as part of a fraud that his brother alleged that uh, Mr. DeJoy was engaged in to create two bank accounts and investment accounts in his brother's name and instruct the employees who worked for Mr. DeJoy to hide that mail from him for six years. We have never had a Postmaster General who has been subject to such allegations. Now, Mr. Joy denied those allegations, and the case was settled with a secrecy agreement. But it's worth exploring and understanding just what those allegations mean for someone tasked with responsibility for getting our mail delivered on time, including our ballots, this fall. The guy in charge of our mail stole his brother's mail so that he could rip off part of his assets? Did, That's did the that allegation right? that was made in court in North Carolina by his brother under oath. Wow. And the, and the decision is sealed. We have no way of knowing how, how this all worked out. That's right. They settled it with a secrecy agreement, and his brother has refused to talk to reporters about, about what happened, other than obviously what was made public in his allegations in the complaint, which was that for six years there were bank statements from Bank One and BB&T and then Genret, the Genret investment firm that were in his brother's names that he never saw and never knew about uh, because, uh, according to his brother, Mr. DeJoy was hiding those mailed bank statements that were mailed in his name.